Welcome to this N Art of Dog Training brought to you by Family Dobermans. In this first tutorial we are going to teach you some of the most important tools you humans can use to shape our behavior. You have to understand first it is very simple even if you don't feel it is very easy. Dogs are much like men, very easy to motivate, and very easy to reward. We are not at all like the forbidden species the cat cats are feminine, impossible to understand, impossible to motivate and difficult to reward. We dogs love unconditionally, that means even when you don't deserve it, even when you are unfair and inconsistent. That is why it is possible for anyone to have a close relationship with a dog. Dogs serve their masters and love them. Those nasty felines have staff that must serve and obey them. They are aloof and do all things on their terms. It takes a real master trainer to train a feline. We recommend you don't bother. Just let us chase all those nasty felines away and give you love, loyalty, devotion and service. Oh and reward us. Did I mention we are easy to motivate and reward? My purpose in enrolling you in this N Art of Dog Training course is so that you properly motivate and reward us so that you might be worthy of the love we are already going to give. When you want success in our learning program, the first thing you must learn is what our favorite rewards and motivations are. When you have the right tools it is easy to be successful. Some of us are rewarded by praise, some by toys, some by food. Most of us love food, so don't forget to try food. Okay. We can also be taught to love other rewards, so do your best to make sure we like all the rewards you have to offer. When you offer us a changing variety of rewards, without a set pattern you increase our focus and desire to earn rewards. You keep our attention much longer and both of us have more fun. Don't forget to reward us please. Do you earn a paycheck at your job? Of course you do. Would you continue going to work and doing your job without a paycheck? Of course you would not. When we are training, that is my job, and I also want to be paid. Did I mention we are like men? We like to be paid dot just like men we love to be paid compliments, praise us. We also love food just like men. Our stomachs are hardwired to our pleasure receptors in our brains. We also love to play. Attention is something we cannot live without. Give us attention. There's one thing you must also know about our noble species. If you do not give us a job and define it for us, we will create one and make up the rules as we go. One of my favorite jobs to do was to unstuff all of those silly fluffy animals in the house. I free those pesky animals from that silly form. I then realized those big soft mattresses were very similar. And I realized they were much softer when I released the fluff from inside of them too. Then my mind began to reel with the possibilities. Furniture, pillows. I thought I was in doggy heaven and I was very good at my job. That is when my master learned to define a different job for me. Do you want to define your canine's job or leave it up to them? Since this is Zen dog training, it is important you begin with the end in mind. Clearly define what my finished job looks like, and work towards that goal with a written plan, a coach and a mentor. Humans must be accountable to someone or something to do a good job. We want you to be Zen master dog trainers that is better for both of us, so have a clear goal and a clear plan, and someone to follow up with you. The next important guideline to be as end master is to make the right things easy to do, and the wrong things difficult to do. It does not take force and compulsion to teach us. We can be motivated easily with the promise of a reward. Force, compulsion and correction are reserved only for when we know what is right and stubbornly choose something else instead or when we have had some bad training or socializing early in life and have dangerous behaviors. It is much better for you to prevent those problems from the time we are young. Fixing them once they have been learned is difficult like it is for you to give up your unhealthy or unacceptable behaviors. One of the most important rules in Zen dog training is to have perfect timing. If you want me to understand what a reward is for, you must reward me immediately when I give the desired behavior. Three seconds later is too late for my brain to understand. Don't tell me good girl or good boy when I do the right thing, if you ask me to sit and I sit, 
then immediately give me a good reward and tell me, good sit, then I can chain together what behavior is associated with which word and the ensuing reward. When we are in the early stages of defining my job, if I offer a behavior that you like for example sitting down on my own, still tell me, good sit, and give me a reward. Remember reward me fast and with something I want. This is often the best Zen training with young canine ninjas, we understand this process very well. Along with your perfect timing is fairness and consistency. We do not care if the reward is a T-bone steak or a small piece of hot dog. Reward or lack of reward we understand very well. If you want us to repeat the behavior, reward us, just as your boss pays you to get you to work again tomorrow. Lack of reward is the best punishment. If you say sit and I lay down, do not pay me. That is punishment enough. You do not need to hit me or kick me or scream at me. I didn't get paid, I understand that. I want to be paid, so I will try something new. That is being fair. Being consistent has to do with always being fair every time you train me. Every time you ask something of me, the same rules need to apply. I am a Zen master at forgiveness by nature of being a dog instead of being a feline, but please do not abuse this or require it of me often. It is also understood that you should ask me to do something once. Then tell me to do it if I did not comply. Do not act like I am a human, do not have a logical discussion with me. Zen dog trainers do not beg or reason or get down on the floor and try to show me what I should be doing. This only makes you look silly. It also tells me I am a better trainer than you since I am the one that got you to offer the behavior. I laugh when his end dog trainer says stupid things like, come on we talked about this many times you know what I want. If I didn't do what you asked me to do, either I don't really know what you want in which case you must teach me, or I am flipping you the bird and refusing to do what you want even though I understand. A Zen master dog trainer knows the difference and knows how to respond quickly, fairly and consistently within the rules of Zen dog training. Silly people why don't you understand that if you want something to obey every command every time and do it perfectly then you should get a robot not a dog. I am a living creature on my own path of becoming a Zen ninja canine. You are not perfect. If you believe you are ask your spouse or significant other. They will bring you back to reality with the helpful serving of humble pie. Do not expect me to be a robot, expect me to be a dog but motivate me to be the very best Zen ninja canine I can be. A true Zen master dog trainer also understands how they say something means everything and what they say has almost no importance. We are aware of so many things about you, things you are not aware you are even doing. The most important thing for an early Zen master trainer to focus on is Tone of voice. Use your happy voice when you are motivating me. That is much better for both of us than a grumpy authoritative voice. If you are having a bad day, give me the day off. We will both be better off for the break. If you try to be a Zen master when you are in a bad mood, we both will make many mistakes and both of us will come away with bad experiences. Sometimes I will be very difficult to teach and you will lose your temper. When this happens, walk away and take a break. This is not rewarding bad behavior, this is being a Zen master. When you refuse to play the training game with me, I do not have the chance to earn a reward. This is the punishment for bad behavior. Don't scold me, hit me scream and otherwise embarrass yourself in front of everyone else watching. This is bad for both of us. I recommend the Zen master rule of never train me alone. You will always do your best and be on your best behavior when you know people are watching. When you are alone it is easier for you to be unfair. Body language is everything to us. From your energy level to your posture, muscle tightness and chemicals in your bloodstream that we can smell. We are aware of everything about you, even when you are only aware of what you are saying, we know everything about how you are saying it. Zen master dog trainers are masters of their bodies. Lastly for this first Zen lesson, accept this truth. If what you are doing as a Zen master dog trainer is not working, you must do something different to get a different result. This does not mean do something more forceful, or less fair. It only means you are the master and must think and come up with a different way to approach a problem. Keeping to these rules will be a good start to making you as an master dog trainer. 
If you wish to learn more, please visit www.familydobes.com.